And we are live, a special edition of Tiger Bait Live Sunday. And uh, after LSU won the football game yesterday, I, I had no I had no thoughts that, uh, or any idea that we'd be coming back in here on a Sunday to talk about Ed Orgeron and LSU Brass coming to an agreement that he will finish out the rest of the 21 season, but will no longer be the coach uh, after that. And so now it, uh, it's uh, everybody's, I'm getting peppered with uh, text message. You can hear my phone vibrating. Our message boards are at tigerbait.com are going crazy. Everybody wanting to know what's next, who's the coach going to be. And uh, so we're going to have many, many weeks of this, but I think a lot of people probably want to talk about it now uh, since the news is broken. We want to thank Tremontes.com uh, for sponsoring this special uh, Sunday show. And um, uh, Preston's got a, a great uh, working uh, arrangement to, in agreement with the, uh, Mike Tremonti over at Tremontes. And uh, uh, give him a little bit of... Yeah, yeah. Thanks for Mike Tremonti for sponsoring today's special show. He's, of course, the one who makes it possible for us to come talk about this awesome stuff. Of course, Tremonti's is featuring their their fried turkeys that you can already start reserving for Thanksgiving. Of course, you want a good Thanksgiving dinner. There's no better place, no better meats than Tremonti's. They have fried, rotisserie, and the normal uh, uh for turkey there uh so go ahead and hop on on you go tremonti is located by parkview baptist on old jefferson go get your fried turkey reserved for thanksgiving they're also doing deer cleaning and skinning so y'all pop on in tremonti's tremonti's.com for more information but we're going to dive into some coaching stuff right now yeah i i just look um you know after the win yesterday i'm you know last week i was like they probably should have ended it last week then after they won, I felt different. Um, at no point have I thought that um, LSU should, uh, if, you know, if somehow he won, continued some sort of streak and maybe uh, won the majority of the remaining games that he would be back. I, I, you know, I thought that ship had already sailed, and obviously it had. Obviously, they've been negotiating for several weeks into a settlement agreement. Um, you can book it. There's a lot of stuff uh, behind the scenes that, that went into that. Um, I don't think there's uh, any doubt that uh, the amount that you see on paper, uh, as far as what his contract is, that he's getting the entirety of that. I don't believe that at all. I've heard anything, anywhere from seven million to fifteen million. Um, so you know I, what the true number is, I have no idea. But now Scott Woodward and Stephanie Rempe uh, are obviously going to be putting together their list, coming up with a. Uh, a, uh, a a plan of action, which, you know, no doubt they've had for weeks. I don't believe that they've got a coach already in mind. Um, yeah. I could be wrong, um, but like I've been saying for weeks, the list of possibilities is going to be impressive. So, yeah, uh, we've got a lot of that to uh, talk about. And, um, and of course, we're going to have a hot board put together pretty soon for TigerBay.com. So, if you want – just get involved on that. I mean, there's just too many names for us to go on a yeah, no, that, live my, show and go through them. Go to tigerbait.com, subscribe for a dollar, right? Yeah, but I, I, the hot board uh, is uh, <laughs> I've been working on it for several weeks, and it's um, and I keep delaying it and putting it off, and uh, so I'm gonna we're, we're gonna have that up tonight. But it, it, you guys know the names we've been talking about them on, on every show, so yeah. Uh, We'll have but, that together before this week, right? You know, I mean, no, no, no. We're just going to be up to that to probably tonight, maybe or tomorrow morning. There's a lot that goes into this coaching search. It's not just going to be a list of names. It's going to be some good quality information. So y'all yeah. check that out. I do want to ground the show with Ross Dellinger, who broke the news. LSU and Ed Ogeron have reached a separation agreement. He will not return in 2022, but is expected to complete the season. Sources tell Sports Illustrated. Negotiations began before the Florida win, and it's unprecedented in the sport to fire a coach 21 months after winning it all. Ogeron is 49-17 and 17 at LSU, but 9-8 and eight since the championship. However, this goes beyond on-field results. A strained relationship between coach and administration rooted in team management and public-slash-private behavior has warped into an untenable situation, distrust, and outburst. So some pretty strong verbiage on a very solid, trustable national source, that is Ross Dellinger with Sports Illustrated. There's a couple other very strong national reports coming out, and it seems like the, the focus today is the off-the-field stuff leaking into on-field performance and whatnot. So a lot of big stuff there's going many, on. There's many, many factors. It's not just that. It's roster management. It's um, – you, you name it. It's, yeah. So – and of course, I think on the other side, uh, I think there's probably 
there are a lot of people in that football program that believe that uh, Woodward has had uh, designs on on getting rid of Ed from day one. So, um, you know, every yeah. athletics director wants their own guy, and he, of course, was not, was hired by Joe Oliva. And that's never helpful. Uh, and, and you know, end result, guys, you got a twenty eight million dollar locker room. You got one hundred two thousand in that stadium, and you know what pays the bills? Putting butts in those stadiums. And yesterday at Florida, you saw about 70,000 people as LSU. And, and actually, ranked the, the, the crowd team. yesterday was better than I thought it would be. Yeah. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, cut the crap. you got to go out and win some football games, put some butts in the stands. And 9-8 nine and eight is not the standard at LSU. You can argue maybe give them some more time. But nobody's going to sit here and say going 500 at LSU is what builds the 102,000 in the stadium. Rodney Kraft says, why let him finish? I think that's something like we've been talking about for a while. You know, what are the who would be the possibilities for interim coach? Uh, you know, will the, will the entire team rally around an interim coach? Do they have that kind of personality? I think the couple of guys that are the interim coaches, I don't know that they would do a better job than Ed Orgeron coaching his team the rest of the way. And, and, of course, look look what happened yesterday. Um, LSU is absolutely a mass unit and uh, played an excellent game against Florida. And now Dan Mullen is on the hot seat. So uh, they are very, very upset at, at Florida. Um, of course, that's of his own words. Uh, I do want to just really quick get a, a Tremonti plug in real quick. Got to pay some bills around here. Thank you, Mike Tremonti, for sponsoring today's show, Tremonti Seafood, located at Old Jefferson near Parkview Baptist. They have 30 kinds of sausage. They, of course, have their lunch deli open 9 to 5. They're open on weekdays, okay, uh, I'm sorry, on Saturdays, four game days. So they're your tailgating and home getting headquarters. You can go pre-order your fried or rotisserie turkeys now. If you have deer, they do cooking and cleaning. Let's go ahead and play the video, Mike. Yeah, let me uh, – see, I wasn't prepared for you. Let me – hold on one second. <laughs> see, I threw a little bomb on him there. I was trying to tease into it. We're doing a little different setup today, guys, because this is a uh... – Tremontes has meat. Tremontes has seafood. Tremontes has much more. Tailgating and home gating platters. Huge wine and liquor selection. Beer and all the spices you need. Chairman Reserve and Wagyu meat. Ribeye rolls, shrimp rolls, kebabs. 20 flavors of sausage for the grill daily lunch specials and game processing on-site catering also available good meat ain't cheap and cheap meat ain't good visit tremontes.com all right thanks to tremontes for sponsoring us um i need to get this one in noah long thank you for the super chat big time who do y'all think should be the next head coach um look i i, I think the list you know I think Mario Cristobal, James Franklin, um, you know, you're going to have Luke Fickle out there. You're, you're going to have Mel Tucker. This was uh, been talked about a bit this weekend. Um, you know, Eric Bieniemy. although I think he's going to be a, an NFL uh, head coach. Uh, people are asking about Dave Aranda. Uh, is Jimbo Fisher, could there be some funny business there? Chris Peterson, uh, Brian Kelly. Um, I mean, th there's the list is going to be, you know, of course, Lane Kiffin. Everybody, there's there's a big contingent of LSU fans that would like Lane Kiffin. Um, Bill O'Brien, offensive coordinator at Alabama, and on and on. There there are many uh, possibilities, and um, so we're going to see how this plays out. I I tend to think that uh, the majority, the the higher percentages, or, or, or I guess if you'd say the the fan base, who they're talking about the most right now is Lane Kiffin yeah. and, and Mario Cristobal. Now, I'm going to tell you this, though. Um, Lane Kiffin, I personally don't think is going to be an option because they're looking for kind of that stable, consistent voice, a good leader, a good program manager type stuff with all this off-the-field stuff that's coming out on this. Uh, I don't think Lane Kiffin's your guy for that. The Joey Freshwater stuff. Yeah, but see, that's long. The problem with that, though, Preston, is that's long gone. You know, and I, even I'm giving him a benefit of the doubt. But then he goes and he does what he did. In pregame two weeks ago, hold your popcorn. Yeah, they yep. don't want a character. They want someone who's going to be serious. Uh, another name I'm hearing a bunch that I don't think is going to happen, Mel Tucker. I personally don't think Mel Tucker has the proven success and longevity of managing a program. He's just not – his, his resume just isn't up for an LSU job. And for the people saying yeah, Mel they Tucker, want Mel Tucker, they don't get it. They don't get what I don't LSU think Mel Tucker. Is. I don't think Mel Tucker has done enough yet. No, I, I agree. Maybe in five years. 
but we'll see. Uh, Dane Bergeron says, I'm cursing right after ch church. Why, why are you cussing, Dane? You, you... Yeah, um, uh, look, here's the deal. If you're upset about this, I want to hear from you in particular because uh, yesterday on the show we were talking about how maybe, maybe the LSU fans who wanted to keep Coach O – were more of a minority or less of a minority than we thought. I thought no one was on his side, but yesterday we heard a good bit of people wanting to keep him around. Yeah. I mean, uh, but in, and today there's just a plethora. I'm talking a plethora of reports coming out. Matt Trent at WBRC. Yeah, don't even read that one right now. Yeah, I mean, uh, The Athletic with some reports. There's a lot of things coming out about the personal stuff since his divorce being the main angle. And you have to wonder where it's all coming from. You have to wonder why that's all coming out now. Because people think it's safe. They're safe. I guess so. Well, why didn't so. you do it two weeks ago? Well, they weren't safe. Uh, I'm thinking that a bit of stuff's being leaked out intentionally right now. No, I mean, look, there's stuff I know that I'm not going to say. It, wh wh right. wh wh why would I say that? Well... The, the, the reality of the situation is LSU and Odojan are parting ways. Um, there is some personal stuff that factored in. It doesn't really matter going too deep in the details on it because there's some ugly stuff. Yep. There's some sites to go look into that stuff. It is, it's not good reports is what we're getting right now. And, of course, the on-field performance was part of it. It was a factor of both. And now LSU will move on at the end of the season – Watch out. LSU All right, let me, let me get the, let me, interim coach Ogeron. Let me, let me breeze through a bunch of comments. Eddie Santos, Latarius Welch says he's done if Raymond leaves. I know a lot of people talk about uh, who should be retained, if anybody. Corey Raymond is, is one of the first ones that's, that's brought up. Um, I can make a case for absolutely cleaning house and not retaining anyone, and, um, and that includes Corey. So, um, uh, I like Corey Raymond. But LSU is going to recruit great DBs whether he's here or not. Absolutely. And I, I would have some question as to the validity of that for LaTerrence Welch, having talked to him. Look, there, there, there's going to be some recruits there that have a relationship with, 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 player, with, with coaches. But, um, um, you know, the, depending on when uh, uh, Woodward can get somebody in there and, and, how, and how quick those relationships can get established. Uh, but mo I think most of the Louisiana kids are going to stick. Yeah, I would say so. I mean, look, when I talked to LaTerrence Welch, I asked him if he had dreamed of playing with LSU, and he said, well, sir, I have LSU stuff on all four walls around me right now. Uh, you know, there's just kids who grow up dreaming of playing for LSU no matter who's the coach. I think it will be tough to keep this class glued to get together, but I think most of your nucleus are hardcore LSU guys. I'm very interested to hear from guys like Walker Howard, Will Campbell, those types who are just incredibly talented program changers. Very interested. And, of course, those offensive linemen are going to be a big deal to keep on board because you need them. Uh, Christian, do you think they will hire someone midseason and both parties agree to keep it quiet? No, I don't believe that. Um, and I, I, Mr. Fontenot right behind you says the new coach has already been hired. No, I don't believe that either. Um, yeah. What I do believe, though, is that, um, you know, obviously if uh, they've got two guys that they view as being equal and one of them can get on campus early in December – Whereas the other one might be end of December or January um, because they're coaching a playoff team or whatever it might be. Um, and, and that's why the, and also where the NFL uh, coordinator stuff really doesn't work because you can't get those guys till January. Yeah. So um, I think, you know, I, I think recruiting will be okay. I believe that. Now, where else she's going to get hurt is out of state. Um, I think the, the out of state recruiting, but then. If you hire somebody who's established, he's got his recruiting board that he was recruiting at the school he's coming from. Yeah. So I think you can fill in the gaps on top of the Louisiana kids. Um, Unless you bring in someone who doesn't have a recruiting class up to LSU's caliber. One guy who stands out to me is Luke Fickle. What kind of recruiting class has he got at Cincinnati? I mean, of course it's not going to be a caliber player, but maybe he could fill some gaps. Jared Guillory says, uh, Kiffin, Jimbo, Peterson. That's your top three. Um you know, everybody says that there's no way Peterson's going to come out of retirement. He's got a disabled son. And um, so I question the culture fit of a Peterson 
and if the willingness of a Peterson. But on paper, that's an that's an outstanding hire. The other two, Jimbo, I'd be eh on based on what he's done at A and M. But I get what he's you know why he's an appeal and why there's a relationship there. Betty Gonzalez Moore, I'm not happy. I think it's a big mistake. And and here's the deal. And I'm not trying to get in trouble, but I've noticed. I swear to you, I'm looking on our Facebook page, uh, my own personal Facebook page. And the, 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 the people who are upset and think it's a bad idea are almost exclusively have been females. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'll say I've noticed that same situation too. But to me uh, – And by the way, that was a big part of Les Miles in 2015 as well. Yeah. Just a little maybe risk-averse audience there. I don't know. Hey, y'all, make sure to share this and subscribe to our page if you're watching now. Hit that bell. We do tons of good live shows throughout the week. I do my Tuesday night show. He does his Wednesday one with Buddy Sonji. I bring on an interesting guest. I think I've got a good, fun one lined up this week. And, of course, we do our post-game show, so y'all hit that subscribe button. Yeah, uh, Rick Restfall, who is Stephanie Rempe? She is uh, uh, Scott Woodward's right-hand uh, person, and um, – she is fantastic. She does a lot of work. Uh, probably a lot of the good stuff you get um, that Scott Woodward gets credit for is probably her doing. Uh, she's that good. So probably a lot of more people should know her name. Uh, but she is uh, she's very much uh, an integral part of LSU Athletics. I think if uh, many of the coaches off the record talked about who they deal with the most, it's probably her. So, Absolutely. Uh, are we still paying Miles, asked Peter Adams. I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know, maybe they got paid out already. No, no, no. They did take care of that. They had a settlement right before he took the Kansas job. I think he had about six or seven left, and they settled for about four and a half. So that's done. Now, in terms of Ogeron's buyout, I, I agree with what you're saying, that there's just no way they pull the full amount with what's going on here, especially if he wants another coaching job somewhere, especially. I can't imagine – He's so old he wants to retire. But I will say Bruce Feldman, who has a relationship with Ed Ogeron, is reporting uh, as part of The Athletic that they, LSU expects to pay him a $17 million buyout, which his full for the rest is like 17 and a half. So essentially the full buyout, I can't imagine a world where LSU ends up paying him. He, might, he might be right, but he might. I, 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 his source is going to be Ed on that. Yes, and yeah, here's his tweet. And, and and I don't I don't think Ed would admit that he's accepting a lot less. Maybe so. Uh, here's his tweet: LSU is expected to pay Ed Ogeron his entire buyout, which is over 17 million, to pursue a new coach. His record at LSU is 49 and 17. He went 13 yep. and five against top 10 teams while coaching the Tigers. Here's I'm what stands out. I'm not buying. Doesn't it. that sound a little partisan? That he only points out. The good things about his entire record well, record there, against top ten teams. I mean, there's no reason to, to, to you know, look. He's got a relate. He wrote two books on Ed. Yeah, I mean, there's a working relationship there for sure. Um, I don't know. I, I'd be shocked if that comes to fruition. But I mean, they they might have put something on paper already that goes to that effect. Uh, PCG and uh, what are the off the field issues? I mean, look, there, those things have been all over message boards, talk radio. Uh, of course, Ed Orgeron single. Uh, the photos have been out there. I mean, that that, that stuff. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of, of, of reports out there. Some of it half true. I mean, there was one earlier today, and I got a message from somebody on the staff saying this is totally false. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. According to Pete Thamel, a source familiar with the situation at LSU, it's one of those things where no one wanted to be there anymore. The players didn't want to play for him. The coaches didn't want to coach for him. I understand that's a quote he probably got. That seems a little over exaggerated. That's an interloper. I don't even, don't even read that crap. Yeah, I mean that that's that, Thamel's a jackass. <laughs> I mean, I'm just pointing out right. what the national right, reports are around this. Faze Hughes Sherbert, very uh, unhappy in alleged personal behavior. Um, I think a lot of people are. We're not going to go too in deep in that because at this point it doesn't matter, and the reports are out there anywhere you want to go. You know, The Athletic has one, WBRZ has one. They're all over. Uh, Emmanuel Washington, please leave Jimbo where he is. Uh, I kind of agree with you, Emmanuel. I tend to agree. Uh, that win over Alabama doesn't erase a lot of uh, issues that I've seen at A&M 
Mm-hmm. Um, they are a two-loss football team right now. Here's the deal, guys. This was supposed to be their year to where they thought that they could uh, either overtake Alabama or keep it close. Texas A&M is a step below LSU in terms of resources, like right up there. Uh, he should be at this point in what his fifth or sixth season be competing for championships consistently. Yet we see he's not there. They're not. They're, they haven't recruited at the same level as LSU. They think they have, but they haven't. They brought in some good players, but he's gotten better offensive linemen in LSU. That's true. But, um, uh, but Brent, Brandon Trahan is Mel Tucker the guy? I don't think so. But uh, he he is he is on the list. I've heard more Mel Tucker than I think is reasonable. Uh, that makes me think that something. Well, it's Bruce Feldman that. pumping that yesterday. That's what I'm saying. I just do not see Mel Tucker being the guy, guys. I mean, look at his resume. Look what he's doing on paper. Like, he's had one good season here at Michigan State, and it is the second season there. I mean, come on, guys. This is LSU. I think people don't get it. You just don't get it. This is a top five job. You go make that call to anybody you want, and they have to respect and listen to you. Look, there's no doubt about it. If you're an, if you're LSU's AD, you, you do interview minority candidates. Uh, there's no Rooney rule in college football, but there is. Yeah. And um, so whether it's James Franklin, him, Dave Aranda, uh, Eric Bieniemy, whatever. Well, I'm gonna tell you this. Um, I'd much. I, you hire James Franklin. I get it. I'm okay with James Franklin as a coach. He's a winner. He's put Penn State at a pretty high level, and there's a reasonable assumption that LSU being a good step above Penn State, maybe he could take that <coughs> success to the next level. He built Vanderbilt into a winning program, albeit while the East was really down. I get it. I don't get Mel Tucker. That makes no sense to me. Yeah, interview James Franklin. He's a great coach. Is he the best coach? I, don't I know. talked to a source today about uh, James Franklin, and he thinks he's a phony. Um this is a guy that runs a major Big 12 site, I mean Big 10 site, and um, questionable coaching, late in games, blown leads, lost games, late in games. Um, but we'll see. Um, Phil Tittle, getting a new head coach just to have your own guy is not smart. Well, that's not the only reason why it happened, Phil. Yeah. He wasn't just going to do it for that reason. Uh, but you could book it. At the first opportunity where the, where the program was in, in, in a slide, and it has been on a slide for two years, ever since the national championship. So with some very embarrassing record-setting losses uh, in there as well. So Yeah. Uh, yeah there's a plethora. I'm not, there's no way that uh, I would even try and make a case for keeping Ed Orgeron. He has to go. Yeah, I agree. And even if you, you know, did want to continue going – you're just too far in. It would feel like a divorce, like like filing for divorce, and then, eh, okay, I think we'll try to keep on going. It just isn't as happy anymore. Um, Blake uh, Edward Ryland, he deserves to finish out the season. He gave us a championship. I don't, I don't have a problem with him finishing out. Yeah, I was going to ask you, do you think – how would you grade LSU's handling of the situation? Well, yeah, I think I, it's okay. Um, Better than Joe Oliva did for sure, right? You couldn't get any worse. <laughs> I mean, no, my God. I, I, there's no good way to do it. There, there's you can. There's, there, 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 nobody gets fired and it's easy, and nobody retires and goes out the way they want. It, it just never happens. I like it. Get your dirt out there today, okay? You understand the situation. We're all accepting it. Let him finish his last. What is this? Five games now left. Uh, go out with dignity. Thank you, Coach O. I think we should all thank Coach O for what he did do at LSU, for the positives, and understand that the negatives are well, here, coming here, with consequences. Like I said on a show a couple of weeks ago, if you would have said, look, you're going to have the most magical season in the history of college football, you're going to win every award, a Heisman Trophy, win every game in impressive fashion, fashion. it's going to be a fun ride every week. Of course, there were some times during the 19th season where even though the offense was fun, the, the defense made people grumble. But it was the greatest season in the history of college football. But you're going to have the next two years are not going to be bad or are not going to be good. They're going to be bad, downright awful at times. You're going to have some off the field stuff. Um, would you take that era? Absolutely. And most, I think most people would have taken it. Yeah. And it, you know, I so. think that LSU fans also learned their lesson from using the "well, he won a championship" excuse. 
they kind of saw the program get dragged into the dirt much longer than it should have. And immediately after you make the change, you trend it upward. And here's the other part. Um, I like the fact that there's a mutual agreement, a settlement has come to. So that way, had this thing gone south or there been some issues from one week to the next, uh, or if there were some really ugly losses and he kept hanging around, then it was just chipping and chipping away, uh, much at the way Dale Brown finished his career at LSU. Well, look how many years it took for Dale Brown for, the, for those wounds to heal. And there's still a lot of people who don't think the court should be named after him. So I'm glad that that part of it is done uh, because now um, I, it's not going to take that long where Ed Orgeron can't come back and, and wave between the first and second quarter during an LSU home game uh, in the years to come. Whereas I think had this played out and there have been some ugly losses and then the way it, it might have gotten handled, the fact that the two parties agreed to a settlement, to me, it makes that a positive. So yeah, that's my positive spin on it. Yeah, I think I think LSU's handling it the right way. Let him finish out. Let us be thankful for him. You know, it's kind of like remember remember the Les Miles game against A and M where he got carried off the field. How many of those people were cheering on Les just to thank him, but still thought it was time to move on? Well, then they decided to keep him around because of all the crazy support. I hope Ed Ogeron really does get that opportunity to, you know, be carried off the field, to be cheered and supported and loved. But thank you. It's time to move on. All right. Um, Brandon Reese, they better keep Raymond, Joseph, Falk, Carter, Davis. Brandon, that is dumb. You don't keep all those. Yeah, that's a lot. you got a clean house. Yeah. That whole place needs to be leveled. It needs to be when someone walks in who's been around the program for years, walks in and doesn't recognize people. I agree. I agree. And I think you maybe keep one or two guys around. Just based off, I'm of not picking at Brandon. I, I didn't words. mean to say you're. You're. I'm not picking at you, Brandon. But I think the whole idea of, of keeping retaining people that that's part of the reason I honestly believe why LSU has had the issues they've had because there's been there hasn't been any turnover. There hasn't been a new coach that came in. There's still people there that are there from the Donardo years in the building. And by the way, some of those people are in the lawsuit suing you when they should have been cleaned out 10, 15 years ago. That's why you're in the shape you're in. Yep. Every now and then you need a new coach to come in there and says, nope, I want my guy, I want my people, I don't want any carryover, and, and that's the bottom line. Now, if he wants to keep one, I, I, you know, Saban kept one, that's okay. Yeah, sometimes but Les Miles kept more. Mm -hmm. He kept just about everybody. Ed Orgeron kept a ton. Like just about everybody. He, he, he kept the entire staff just about. Yeah, or you didn't keep, uh, what's his name? That, uh, Cam Cameron. Damian Craig, and that's why they, we had, they had the issue at the A&M game the next. <laughs> and, and he started acting like a jack, the jackass he is. Well, you know. He's not even welcome at Auburn. And I also say there's a bit of toxicity inherently in any situation where you're working for somebody who didn't bring you in. Okay, there's no loyalty. There's no support wanting to prove that your hire was the right guy. That's bad. Uh, Mr. Fontenot, Coach O was a good interim, and that's all he has ever really been to the admin at LSU. So now we pick up where we left off when Les was fired. Well, Mr. Fontenot, I, I, there, there's some validity to that, but you'll, you'll never be able to take that 2019 season away from Ed Orgeron. Yeah, I mean, he's got one giant ring on his no, finger. And, and that um, that is uh, – I'll never see that in my lifetime. And, and a, a nine-year-old who was – nine years old in 2019 will never see that in their lifetime i'm convinced i agree um uh they should probably keep raymond mason smith the recruiter possibly the outline coach yep uh again i i don't, I don't think you keep people then that, that's one of the unfortunate things here um yeah there's some good coaches some good people that uh aren't going to be around I, I keep thinking about Blake Baker and, of course, his wife's from Louisiana and how excited they were to come back home. And, and now you have this. So, you know, depending on all the coach is and whether he's an offensive-minded coach or a defensive-minded coach and who he's bringing in uh, for coordinators, um, you know, then from there you, you, might, you might see a path as to, well, you know, because he's on that side of the ball, he actually worked with so-and-so over at this place, you know, and there's a relationship there. Right. I mean, you, you – you know, maybe there's a scenario there and somebody you're not even thinking about that should be 
carried over uh, get gets carried over just because there was a previous relationship at a different stop. You know, and here's the ultimate thing: when you're talking about refacing a program, okay, completely new look, starting from scratch, there's going to be some good people lost in that transition. Period. End of discussion. It is what it is. When you make a coaching change, when you make a program change, there's some negatives that are going to come with it. That's the end of the discussion. But you're doing it for the future of your program. Scott Tron, after listening to all the stuff off the field, you would think LSU did not pay all of the buyout. I don't believe they did either, Scott. Um, I just, just no way. Faye Hughes Schubert, one of our Tiger Bait uh, premium subscribers. My first alert on the breaking news was TigerBait.com. All right, Faye. Yeah, well, we got. A, I got a text alert out as soon as uh, uh, that, that report came out from Ross Dellinger. Yeah. Um, I was sitting. I was sitting in my office. So. You know, and I, I saw that tweet within 120 seconds of it coming live. And you know, it was funny. Before I even got to talk to Mike about it, I got a text <coughs> alert. So if you're a Tiger Bait subscriber, you get some serious value out of those text alerts. Don't believe me? Come to TigerBait.com. One dollar. Give it a try. I promise you, you'll get your, some good stuff in the one week that you get for that one dollar. Uh, Mandy Schlegel. Uh, uh, in, in part, sorry if I, I, I said your last name wrong, Mandy. Um, James Franklin is a good option. Uh, Dave Randa is a good idea, too. Talk about the Rooney Rule stuff. Dave Aranda is a guy. Well, but in, but in those cases, I don't think that that's even really applying because I mean, look at Aranda. What are they five and one right now? Six, six and, one? and one. They just beat. I mean, the number nineteen. I was on. Country. I don't know if some of you saw it. I posted on Tiger Bait. I was on uh, three six five Sikkim C three six five three six fives uh, show on Friday, and of course they cover Baylor, and I got a relationship with those guys because of all the mulky stuff we did uh, weeks ago. And, um, yeah, so just checking something real quick, guys. Yeah, there's, uh, there's some no, news we're, hey, we're keeping an eye out be for. Quiet. Don't tease it yet. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think um, – now where was I? Well, you were talking about Kim Mulkey. Yeah, they, they asked me uh, – I have a relationship with those guys, and they said, well, well we got you on. They, weren't, they like to do uh, regional and national stuff. And they were saying, well, what about our Dave Aranda? We got you on here. I got to ask you about him. Is it? And I said, no, you know, Aranda's name really hasn't been coming up a whole lot. And um, But uh, then this weekend it kind of has. So Yeah. Let me tell you this. The names you're hearing pumped strong right here, I don't think either one of us expect to hear those names be the final name. Right? Now, I mean, are we on the same page? What, what's that, that Jim Milano? What was that, that name you keep on bringing up for Lane Kiffin? The, the this is your who and who? The this is your your Trojan horse or whatever. I don't expect Lane Kiffin to be the guy. I don't expect any of the names being pumped hardcore right now. To be they're being pumped so hard it sounds fishy, right? Yeah. Um, Mandy Schlegel says no to Jimbo Fisher. Let's see. I understand that. I'd rather Dave Aranda than Jimbo Fisher personally. I mean, I think Jimbo's kind of proven what he is. He was incredible with first-round quarterbacks. Man, look at all the no on Kiffins. A lot of people are saying no on yes, Kiffin. I think that's a good thing. I don't think Kiffin is a great fit for the program. I think that's smoke from Jimmy Sexton to get him a pay raise. He got yeah, I, I, trash I, I, last I night. believe that's all a Jimmy Sexton smoke screen. I agree. Um, and I'm hearing a lot of no's to Tucker's. I think the reports came out nationally. I believe it was Bruce Feldman. Here, here's the thing you got to watch out with those kind of reports is everybody's got a friend. Okay, Bruce Feldman's friend is Ed Orgeron. Um, but who else is he, he, might he have friends with? Well, he's a Fox News sideline reporter. He does Big Ten. You know, and I'm not saying this is the case with him, but there are people in the media who get used by agents and oh. friends that, uh, or coaches saying, you know, uh, they'll say something to, to a reporter. You know, I, I might be interested in that job. If they called me, I'd be interested. And, and so then that reporter goes out and says, uh, so-and-so is a candidate for the job. That's how that gets done. And sometimes it's out, downright blatant. Please drop my name. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it, 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 and it's one of those things where, you know, in modern media, it's always sources. And you have to. I mean, we have to use sources sometimes. But you really don't know what the agenda of sources could be. 
Yeah, uh, Brandon Reese. I wouldn't mind Cristobal though. Yeah, I'm Cristobal's kind of been my number one, but I'm not. I'm not married to him. Uh, uh, I, I actually am not nuts over Cristobal whatsoever. I really am just not. I think I've got at least five guys above Cristobal. I don't hate the hire. I just think there's some really good names. Uh, out there. I like Cristobal. Man, I, I'll tell you who might be my number one right now, Luke Fickle. That's a guy with sustained high-level success at Cincinnati. He's going to get a chance to make the playoffs this year. And he is rocking and rolling. I love me some Luke Fickle, man. I don't know. I don't know. He's on the list. Um, but a lot of people, if you're going to go that route, will say Matt Campbell. But now Iowa State's not doing what they – Thing is, though, Luke Fickle's had long-term success, sustained success. Matt Campbell hadn't been at Iowa State as long as, as Luke Fickle's been at Cincinnati. He took over a But mess. who has more impressive wins out of those two? Well, I don't know. Probably probably Matt Campbell. I think, I think those guys that you're naming are down the list. I see. I don't know. I, I don't see those guys as being Woodward hires. Well, I mean. Woodward hires are Jimbo, Brian Kelly, Cristobal, He's going for proven head coaches at major schools in Power 5 leagues. I see Luke Fickle mopping the floor with teams right now at Cincinnati, a place that's difficult to build up. Yeah, but I who, saw are him take Georgia, who are they playing? I saw him take Georgia to the wire last year for a chance in an undefeated season. Did they win? No. Would you have won? How many coaches would have won that ball no, game? I'm just saying. I'm... You know what I mean? Like, dude, there's something to be said about – a 12 and 0 Cincinnati team coming up I mean, short I, I, the same against ar- Georgia. I, I can make the same, you know, for Billy Napier. You can, except for he doesn't have a 12 and 0 season. He wasn't in the Sugar Bowl. He did he even has he even won the Sun Belt? You know, like the long-term sustained success of Luke Fickle at Cincinnati. Go look it up. He's been good for a very long time there. Rodney Kraft, I'm not uh crazy about the Penn State coach Jane Franklin. I'd rather have Dave Aranda. I agree, actually. Uh, Denley Nelson, interesting. Mel Tucker was an assistant at, at uh, LSU under Nick Saban. Yep. Uh, another Michigan State coach who was lured to LSU after a short stint with the Spartans. <laughs> I think Mel Tucker would need more time. I agree. As a head coach. I agree. Um, Matthew Sales is Woodward avoid Kip because of the questionable personality. I think he does, but I will say that questionable personality stuff is not as pronounced as it used to be. Lane has gotten older. It's not like it, it's not like it was 10, 15 years ago. I think um, the only reason you're here in Lane Kiffin is just the the offensive mastermind type angle. I think a lot of people are drooling about Walker Howard and Lane Kiffin, and I've also heard a lot of people saying that that might help get Arch Manning. I don't think that's a factor, right? Arch Manning is not a factor in this whatsoever, right? Ryan Perez, where'd you get the Bobble Tiger? That was in a uh, gift set with uh, Bank One probably 20 years ago, and a buddy of mine worked at Bank One, and he got me a set. You remember when uh, Jerry DiNardo? It says Bank One right here. Is this? It's is one, of the, uh, uh, one of the banks that no longer exists. They're all buying each other. Pretty soon we're going to have two banks to choose from. <laughs> Easy there. <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> no comment on that but do you remember there's a difference between you... banks and credit unions preston <laughs> uh look um uh jerry denardo did a commercial of bank one back in the day i wonder if that's what that's from god jerry denardo commercial no this was during the, this was during the saban era because i actually uh, there's actually a saban bobblehead that's insane that bank one was around while saban was here that's crazy and there's a burtman there was a burtman one in the box too and i think a pete maravich there's somewhere in my attic um man i am getting a lot of dms and text messages today i don't know about you it's gonna be a crazy week for us yeah uh hakeem batiste uh fickle and marcus freeman are waiting for the ohio state job and they're gonna be waiting for a long time um yeah i mean ryan day is pretty entrenched there it's gonna take a lot for that to come, come on mike you don't fire orgeron and hire kip and same train wreck at the end of that why are you telling me to come on? I'm not. I'm not for uh, Lane Kiffin. I've already said we've had two cartoon characters, and I don't want a third one. I agree. I mean, I am adamantly opposed to Lane Kiffin. I mean, I don't think it. I think if this were 2016, and the Lane Kiffin was in his status the way he is, he's one of the top candidates. I don't think he is right now. Chance Babb and Napier does a good job developing players, offensive linemen for sure. Uh, that's why I like Mario Cristobal. Um, he. 
was on out Nick Saban's staff, offensive line coach, stole Cam Robinson from LSU and Frank Wilson that year. But he's won 33 games as a head coach, and he's lost 12, 33 and 12 at ULL. We're talking about a guy. I mean, look, the last two seasons, he's gone 11 and 3, 10 and 1, and he's 5 and 1 right now. Is that truly enough, truly, to be the LSU head football coach? I don't think so. I think you need more experience and time. Now, maybe one day he proves me wrong, but there's a big step in between ULL and LSU, right? Todd, Todd, number one, Dabo, number two, Saban, number three, Fickle, uh, number four, Kelly, number five, Cristobal. Break out the checkbook and get one. Yeah, I mean, well, they're not going to be afraid to break out the checkbook, guys. Make no mistake, that is of no consequence this time around. LSU will probably offer a very lucrative long-term contract with lots of guaranteed money, but they're going to get their guy. There's going to be no Oliva, you know, tiptoeing around. Okay, we got this guy Jimbo on the line, but he wants this and that. Uh, you're going to see none of that this time around. LSU is not afraid to bring out the big bucks. Uh, and f- Woodward has a proven track record in history of going after that big guy. So whoever his guy is, he'll go after him. He ain't afraid. It, it really doesn't matter who it is. Let's see some comments here. Dabo, yuck. Mel Tucker, I'm hearing a lot of that. Uh, Dabo is not a guy you should be saying yuck over, right? <coughs> Todd, Todd, of your five, I, I, my – I'll take your five and your four. Let's see here. Dabba. Oh, the yeah, first Brian two, Kelly. The first two are unrealistic. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know. Uh, you know, could uh, – you know, what's going on with uh, Dabo? By the way, guys, I want you to go subscribe to TigerBait.com. Uh, you can get on the site for $1. And like I always say, choose the annual package. Uh, you get three – essentially get three months for free when you choose the annual package. And uh, we're going to have a lot of coverage – on this coaching search in the in the coming weeks, you can book it. So, and we've got a lot of great discussion on the premium board right now already, and so we'll, I'll see you there day and night uh, on TigerBait.com's premium message board. Um, got a super chat, but I'm not sure what he's asking for because he wants a 30 second review of what happened and what was said. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I'll read the uh, news tweet for him since he's yeah. Ed Delion, super thank you for the super chat, Mike. Can you do a thirty second review of what happened and what was said? I just tuned in and heard about this. <laughs> well, uh, Ross Dellinger broke the news hours ago that uh, LSU and Ed Orgeron had come to a settlement agreement. He will finish out the twenty one season and he won't return as the head coach for the twenty two season. And um, and there's some debate uh, behind the scenes as to whether he's getting the entire 17 whatever million, uh, or it's as low as seven or eight. I think it's somewhere in between. So, um, and now we go from here. Uh, Ed Orgeron will be essentially like an interim coach, a head coach, interim coach the rest of the way, while uh, Scott Woodward and Stephanie Rimpey, um do their work to find LSU's next football coach. Of course, there's three factors. Okay, if, if just the real quick boom, 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 why is Ed Ogeron parting ways with LSU? Number one, nine and eight on the field since the championship. That ain't going to cut it at LSU. Number two, off the field, rah, rah. Plenty of sources to go into that. I'm tired of talking about who Ed Ogeron's holding hands with. Number three, you got to understand Woodward did not hire Ed Ogeron and had no, uh, you know, no reason to keep him around. Those are your three factors on why Ed Ogeron is no longer the coach. They know why he ain't here. Yeah. Uh, you know, so d- d- if you're looking for the recap, there you go. Let's see. Uh, dang, Kenny. You could have hit probably hit me for some sponsor money if I knew the show was coming. <laughs> I can do an on-air read right now, Kenny. Well, look, hey, speaking of on-air read, I'm very happy that Mike Tremonti was kind enough to make this show possible today because, of course, we cannot pay for all this equipment and stuff, these upgraded mics, this new studio, this table that me and him have grinded really hard to make happen with just ourselves, by the way. Uh, So thank you, Mike Tremonti, for making today's show possible. Of course, Tremonti's Meat and Seafood is your home gating and tailgating headquarters for the 2021 season. They are open on Saturday, so y'all go pop up. They do some catering, get that commercial ready. Uh, (laughs) um, So, of course, now they are prepping for Thanksgiving. They have smoked, okay? They have fried 
and they have rotisserie turkeys ready for Thanksgiving. They're taking your orders now. You will impress your family with a Tremonti's turkey. So y'all pop in. My mom is getting to the age where she can't tolerate fried. All right, because she, she don't like when it's injected. She's so she keeps asking for a traditional baked. Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, I can bake one, but I'm not going to do it. Right. But that rotisserie sounds good to me. And it's healthy. And honestly, man, I'm gonna, I'm, I think, I think, so I think I'm going to order a rotisserie. So uh, let, let me let me run their commercial and then. Tremonti's has meat. Tremonti's has seafood. Tremonti's has much more. Tailgating and home gating platters. Huge wine and liquor selection. Beer and all the spices you need. Chairman Reserve and Wagyu meats. Ribeye rolls, shrimp rolls, kebabs. 20 flavors of sausage for the grill. Daily lunch specials and game processing. On-site catering also available. Good meat ain't cheap and cheap meat ain't good. Visit Tremontese.com. All right, thank you, Tremontes. Uh Scarlett Brown, the president wants Tucker because he was a Nick Saban assistant 20 years ago. Um, I don't know if, that, if that's what's going on there, but uh, look, uh, Mel Tucker is a, is a good football coach. I don't think he's done enough at Michigan State, but uh, we'll see how it plays out. Um, look, Mel Tucker's a great coach if Mississippi State fires their coach and they're looking for him. Mel Tucker's a great coach if a Tier 2 program needs a coach. Maybe like even USC. LSU is one of the top five jobs in college football, and I think it's darn near time fans start realizing that. Nuss bus, you're going to blow my eardrums and speakers uh, with that uh, Tremonti commercial. Okay, uh, that, you're the second one that said that. I'm going to have to figure that out. we got a new audio system, so I wonder if, if, if my audio deal is, is affecting that. So I'll get that figured out for the next show. I apologize. Apologize about that, guys. Of course, the sound system, we do think sounds pretty good, but yep. some learning curves. All right, uh, Palermo Trapani, I agree that the way he handled uh, the CU to Michigan State deal was dishonest, totally Agree, not a good look, but he can coach. Um, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Someone else saying the commercial was loud. That's eh, we're working on it. And well, I'll, I'll have that fixed by Tuesday night. I promise y'all guys. Um, let's see, guys. I'm scrolling up. Mel Tucker is. It's a bad option. He would be our best recruiter since Nick Nick Saban. How do you know that, though? You know what I mean? Like, he's so unproven. I think he's only been a head coach, what, like five total years? Yeah, here's my thing. What we've seen Scott Woodward do higher since he's been an AD at now three stops, he goes for established coaches that have done it for many years at a high level. So, he guys with championships – Kim Mulkey with multiple. Jay Johnson with trips to Omaha. So, we'll see. I mean, look, he ultimately Mel Tucker was a head coach one year at Colorado, and this is his second year at Michigan State. You have no idea what his true body of work is in those, especially in recruiting. I will say this. I actually think that it doesn't matter how good your head coach is recruiting at LSU because it recruits itself. Do you think – you've told me stories about Les Miles as an actual on-field recruiter. I, I'm not 100% convinced Les Miles was actually a very good recruiter. I think the, the program recruited no, he, himself. No, he, he, um, he had a lot of holes uh, regularly. Um, Scarlett Brown, Tucker – and by the way, his recruiting coordinator, Frank Wilson, uh, was a part of that. I think Frank got out just in time. I think a lot of the reason why the, the remaining years that Les had problems – was because Frank was a recruiting coordinator and had some misses. And that's the truth. Scarlett Brown, Tucker has not proven anything. He dishonestly left Colorado for Michigan State. And what? He'll do it again to LSU. Um, I think she right now. I, for LSU, though, big difference there. Meaning he would do it to come here. Yeah. Not that he would do it to LSU. All right, but here's the thing. Um, now I lost my train of thought. Well, here's the deal. You never want to hire a coach with the fear of, okay, what if he's successful and leaves? Here's what I'm saying. Those names getting dropped are being dropped for a reason. I agree. For public sentiment to, to blow them out of the water so, they can, so they're off the board. Yeah. Lane Kiffin and Mel Tucker the are Lane being Kiffin pushed stuff out there, so right? hard 
The link, the link Kim is up right now is the Tony Vitello of, of baseball. There you go. Yeah, it's being pushed. So that's hard why I keep saying. Fishy. That's why I keep saying. Who is the Jay Johnson? Who is the James Jay Johnson of this football search? The guy that someone hardly anybody's talking about. Yeah. Let's scroll down. Let's see. Scarlett Brown, of course, clarifying. I'm saying he'll leave those boys. To, of course he comes to LSU if LSU comes knocking. Understand, if you're Michigan State and LSU wants your football coach, he's now LSU's football coach. LSU will bully about 100 football programs out there. There's only a dozen jobs or so that I legitimately think that LSU should be fearful of, of losing a guy if they come here. Uh, unless there's some sort of personal tie or ambition. Jim Milano less went hard after Fournette. Yeah, he did, and then he lost Cam Robinson. Yep, that's right. To Mario Cristobal. That's right. And you know who else he lost that year? He lost the two uh, New Orleans boys, uh, two five-star guys down there. I'm trying to speed in oil. And, um, Frank L Wilson lost Greg, uh, Greg Robinson to Auburn. That's probably worse than when, 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 when you don't ha when you when you you miss offensive linemen in a, in a state that doesn't produce them regularly. That's why you're a long way from being OLU, which is why I really like Mario Cristobal. Um, but I like I saying. said, I can I can my mind can be changed. I, I think that, I think that overall there's going to be some some uh, big time guys. Cristobal is another less miles, and Luke Fickle is not leaving since he. So you guys need to start thinking elsewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Jimbo. If LSU wants Luke Fickle, Luke Fickle will be LSU's coach. Stop fooling yourself. I'm not. Who, who's pushing Luke Fickle? You? Yeah, I'm pushing Luke All right. Fickle. I want. Luke I'm about Fickle. to mute your mic. Man, get over it. Okay. Um. Joe Brady? Nope, that's not happening. Remember when Cristobal was fired from FAU? Preston does. I don't want a guy who's been fired from a program. This is LSU. But again, guys, there's only a handful of coaches you should be I want the guy worried went, about. I want the guy who went to Columbus, Ohio, and beat Ohio State. Yeah? How yeah, like that? Well, all right, there you go. So we're going to do it on one win. How about the guy who went to New Orleans and won against Clemson, a 25-game win streak, Trevor Lawrence? You know, you can't look at it like that, man. So uh, I just, you know. And I also know that uh, if Nick Saban were to retire, Cristobal would be at the head of the top of Alabama's list. Maybe up there. I think they go Dabo no, first. No, they won't. They hate Dabo there. Do they? They hate him. Uh, I think they like winning. Dabo's an interesting one. Is 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 Clemson fans are are they you know with this one year struggling? Are they kind of losing faith in him? I don't know. Underappreciating him? I don't know. I don't think that's really realistic for him to come to LSU though. I don't think Dabo Sweeney's realistic. Pete anymore. Rodriguez Raymond is a stud recruiter. We'll see. I, I think Ram whoever the new coach would be is certainly. Going to take a long, hard look at Corey Raymond, uh, no doubt about it. Yeah. But if they go in a different direction, I don't believe it's the end of the world like a lot of people do. You know who's a name uh, I'm a little surprised hasn't come up, but I, I'm not saying he's likely, but what about Urban Meyer? Is there any possibility LSU just says, I don't care about the off-the-field stuff, give me Urban? Nah. I, I, yeah. Nah? No. See, I, the only thought I have is maybe Woodward says, screw the nonsense, he's a championship coach. But I know you don't like him because of other stuff, the, uh, the health stuff you don't like him for. Look, uh, Blake Rafino says he wants a shirt like mine. I need to get some more of these printed up. I want a shirt like yours. I don't even have one these, of those. This is old. This is old. Yeah, it is old. I like the new ones we have. Um, let's see. Rodney Kraft, I don't like this. Letting Ed finish out can only backfire with each win. Things get complicated. I think that's part of the reason why it got out, to be honest with you. So that way there is no complications. Uh, and then now Ed's free as a bird. He can let it fly. And uh, we go from there. You got interim Ed Ogeron back. I think that's dangerous. I'd say the biggest problem you could possibly face would be if Ed Ogeron were to do something like beat Alabama and completely win over the fans back, that could get messy. Let's see. Let me scroll down. Uh, yeah, we got some John Gruden from Robert Williams. Uh, <laughs> no. Let's see. Let's not even entertain that. Just N-O. Absolutely not. Brandon Reese, uh, Urban Meyer not leaving Jacksonville after one year, and I still – don't know 100% what the, the, 
the story is with it with his health his health um might go look at fickle schedule since 27 before you turn your nose up to him he's been very oppressive oh i'm not downplaying him. he is on my hot board uh, I think Luke not at all i'm big on luke fickle man and I mean, plus I, I just like to argue with preston um <laughs> Uh, Cameron Rogers, I'm from Alabama. I live in Alabama. Trust me, Alabama fans in, in, in Alabama hate Debo. Um, well, there you go. Charles Duncan, Dabo benefit from Deshaun Watson, Trevor Lawrence. Well, quarterbacks are a big factor in college football. Uh, LSU uh, knows that all too well. Well, and of course, but my thing is that it was under multiple quarterbacks. And before that, it was Taj Boyd. You know, it seems to me like, if you can sustain it under multiple successful quarterbacks, maybe it's more than the quarterback. Adrian Marlowe, I like the sissy blue coach. <laughs> so there's a, so uh, there's we can a, agree that Chip there's, Kelly, there's a vote for Chip Kelly. Chip, I think Brian Kelly is an option. I, I don't think Chip Kelly is. I uh, like Brian Kelly. Uh, you know, I got an argument, uh, not an argument, this discussion earlier with uh, Brian Lazar about James Franklin and discussing, you know, between uh, USC and – first of all, LSU is a better job than USC. 100%. But I can, but I also have a feeling that I, I think Penn State is as good or better job than USC. Why would he leave there? I don't think he does leave Penn State. And the USC. whole deal about it's an easier path to the playoffs at USC, I don't, that's not going to be the case in a couple of years when we go to a 12-team playoff. That's true, too. That's true, too. So, I, I you know – yeah, I don't know. Those are. Very I think I, I think you can have a lot more longevity longevity at Penn State. I mean, Penn, USC certainly has bigger name recognition, but Penn State is an underrated program. The, the, the only thing about Penn State is they haven't won a championship recently. It's been decades, but other than that, they've been a pretty Kenny good Haynes program. Kenny says, "Hey, Preston Belichick was fired before he got the Patriots job." Yeah, yeah, that's true. I'm just not nuts over Thank you, Kenny. Ball. Thank you, Kenny. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, guys, if y'all enjoy the show, please do me a favor. Hit the like button uh, uh, on Facebook or YouTube. If you're on YouTube and both places, on YouTube especially, please hit the subscribe button. Click the notification bell. We got live shows going all week long. Preston uh, is here Tuesday night. I'm here Wednesday night at 8 o'clock uh, with Buddy Sanji this week. And uh, I've got a few more things coming that we're going to be doing some live shows with, uh, particularly with some recruits. I'm going to have that, um, uh, probably not live shows, but we're going to, I'm going to do some video shows like Zoom style shows with some recruits this week. Uh, and, and, and we'll have those up on, on TigerBait.com. So go subscribe. We want to have you there. Choose the annual package as always. And um, it's going to be very interesting, no doubt about it. We wanted to come on board today and, and do this show. And, and talk about it because, I, first of all, it, it shocked me. I didn't think it was going to happen a day after a win. I thought there was a real possibility had they lost yesterday and had yesterday's game gone to how we thought it might. Um, but here we are. And um, I think it's a positive for Ed Orgeron. Uh, now he gets to finish out. Um, and uh, I think it's going to free him up. And, and, and I think the team's going to play better. I, 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 think there's a good, so. I think there's a good chance of that. And um, so now uh, Scott Woodward and Stephanie Rempe will go out. And Stephanie Rempe was a big part of getting Jay Johnson here. So um, they're going to be doing their work and, and, and trying to find the next head football coach at LSU. And uh, we're going to be covering the whole rest of the way at TigerBait.com. So uh, thank you all for, uh, for tuning in today. And, and please share this uh, to, to your Facebook and social media, the show. Very much appreciative. And uh, I'll see you on the Tiger Bait message boards uh, every day and night. Uh, I'm going to be there uh, mingling with the subscribers and bringing you guys as much info. Brian's got an analysis piece uh, about this situation that he's going to have for tonight. Uh, and he's still got the uh, report card from the Florida game, his position grades. We'll have both those things on TigerBait.com. So I'll see you guys there. Big thanks to Tremontes for sponsoring this special Sunday uh, show. And uh, thanks to Preston for being with me. So. Y'all have a good rest of the weekend, and uh, we'll see you on TigerBait.com.